Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now the Kaunta scheme of the early war in the desert during the Second World War, well, there's a few stories about it. And one of them is that there was a blue version, which I haven't been able to find any real concrete evidence of. Uh, unfortunately, this scheme didn't actually work particularly well, so it was quite quickly retired. But if you're looking for something that is absolutely iconic, for the early war period in the Western Desert, this is it. So I'm going to show you how to do this as simply as possible and without using any masking tape because getting masking tape onto all of these little itty bitty uh, rivets and what have you can be a real pain in the neck. So this is all painted by hand. All of the paints will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. So what I've got in front of me is a Vickers Light Tank Mark VI. Uh, this is a 3D print, it's from Avernus Miniatures, is where the STL for this one's come from, and I'll make sure to include a link to that in the description, because it's actually got a couple of variant turrets in there as well, if you do want the uh, the 20mm armed version of this. But I like the little heavy machine gun version, and it is what the New Zealand 2nd uh, Division was armed with in the desert. So, I'm going to pop the turret aside, and of course remember, anything we do to the hull, we are also going to do to the turret, the first thing we're going to need to do is lay down a base coat. This is Screaming Skull from Citadel. Now, the official color, uh, the Quanta Schemes base coat was called Portland Stone. And uh, ordinarily for desert vehicles, you would lay down something like Vallejo Dark Sand. But Dark Sand is just a little bit too dark for the Portland Stone that we want to try and replicate. You could mix a little bit of ivory into that dark stone. Uh, but Screaming Skull is pretty much perfect. Now any old white primer will do here. Um, I've used Wraithbone from Citadel because just a little bit of colour in it is not going to hurt. But you see, applying this fairly quickly with a nice big brush will not take us very long at all. Now comes the fun part. Ironically, it's actually easier to do this with the turret attached. Um, if you want to stop it from wiggling around, then just pop a little bit of blue tack on the inside of the turret ring. Um, it's not really going to be a huge issue most of the time, though. What I've got in front of me is a sheet where I actually have the Kaunta uh, camo scheme laid out in a picture, uh, because these were applied in a very specific way. So what I'm going to do, areas that are going to be the darker green later, I can make a mistake in that direction. So I'm not too worried, as I paint down the front here, I'm just going to flick my brush a few times and slowly straighten that line out. And when it comes to the, uh, the areas that I want to be correct, shall we say, I'm going to take a little more time and paint those just a bit more carefully. And then when I've got the framework laid out, what I can do is start filling in the actual uh, blocks of camo color, as it were, with a little bit more speed and ease. Now at this point, you'll see that I'm really just laying down some lines. This area I'm going to fill in in a little bit. Now that doesn't look like much yet. <laughs> the important thing to bear in mind here is not to worry too much about perfect straight lines at this point. We've got plenty that we can do to tidy up. And we can even disguise a few little blips and errors as we go, but importantly, getting that solid color down is what we really want here. We'll move on now, and I'm going to use German Field Gray from Vallejo for the next color. And this time I am going to be a little more uh, selective about how I apply this. So this time I'm going to match up alongside the stone gray that we've already applied, and just little flicking motions to try and keep those lines as straight as possible when I first put them down. And when I'm satisfied with that, I can start being a little less careful. Okay, now that takes a fair bit of doing, I'll be perfectly honest. Uh, but it is still a lot easier, I've found, than actually masking something with so many bleeding rivets on it. So your mileage may vary, and if you do find it easier to mask it, then more power to you. What I am going to do now is to finish off tidying up uh, with a little bit of our original Screaming Skull, just to straighten up some of the stone grey. 
Now, once you're satisfied with that, uh, I can still see a couple of spots that are a little bit patchy, but I'm going to flub those as we go. Once you're happy with what you've got though, it's time to mix up the shade mix. Now, there's a few ways you can do this. There are some very good enamel versions, uh, but I'm going to stick to acrylics. And when it comes to shading stuff, uh, British stuff in particular for the Desert War, I'm going to use a mix of soft tone, strong tone, and a little bit of water from the Army Painter. Well, the water's not from the Army Painter, it's from the tap, but the shades are from the Army Painter. So we'll start with one, two, three, four, five, six drops of soft tone. Then the same thing again of one, two, three, four, five, six drops of strong tone. Uh, reason being is the soft tone is a little bit yellow and strong tone is just a bit too dark by itself. And then finally, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten drops of water, which will seem like quite a lot, but you'll see why when we apply this. And once you're satisfied that it is mixed together properly, it's time to start applying it over our tank. And you'll see the water actually helps the, uh, the army painter washes to flow quite nicely into the recesses without really staining uh, the color on the flatter areas, which is brilliant because I would hate to have to come back and <laughs> paint those again. So what I'm going to do is go around the whole tank and shade it. Now, this does look a little better if you can keep your brush moving in the same direction as you apply your shade. Obviously it's not always possible, but wherever you can, that will give you a much smoother finish. So all over the hull and on the running gear that we haven't had to worry about just yet, apply yourself some of the shade mix. Now once it's had plenty of time to dry, you'll have something that looks like this. And finally, we're getting somewhere. That's not too shabby. Now the thing with the Army Painter washes is that when they dry, they can dry a little bit glossy. So let it dry for a good long while because you might think it's dry, it's still wet. The glossiness does make it a little bit difficult to tell sometimes, but don't worry about it. Just be patient. What we are going to do now is a couple of dry brushes to add a little bit more visual interest to our flat surfaces. We're going to start by going back to stone grey. And what I'll do with this is work, as always, most of it off into a bit of kitchen towel. And the stone grey I'm going to use to dry brush just the field grey sections of the contour. Don't worry too much as you get near the edges where the other colors are, because if you go over just a little bit with the uh, stone gray, well, we're going to be dry brushing those in a second anyway, and we'll get rid of most of that. So as you'll see, nice and quickly, we pick out the edges there, get a bit more detail on our tank. You can see there we've got a little more visual interest. We're going to do the same thing again here using pale sand. And we're going to do this over both of the other colors. Um, honestly, if you really wanted to, you could use something slightly different over the stone and then over the beige. Uh, but I just don't think you really need to at this point. So dry brushing the edges of those other two colors. And then after those couple of dry brushes, you'll have something that looks like this. And that's our contour pattern done. From here what I'm going to do is to paint in the rest of the details of the tank, and there aren't actually all that many to be perfectly honest. So stick around if you've not seen me paint a British vehicle for the desert before, but if you have, you're probably not going to be too surprised. I have here burnt umber, and what I'm going to do is I always find this easier doing this section first, because I can be quite messy with it. Uh, thin it down a little bit more than it should be to really just let it flow into the recesses of these little tracks. And when I hit the, uh, the running gear, I've still got the black wheel rims to paint later anyway. So not a big deal if I make a little bit of a mess here. Don't forget as well, the exhaust also looks good with a couple of coats of this. And with that done, I'm going to use some German gray to paint in the wheels. And I'm also going to use this to paint in the MG in the turret. Now I'll get just a little bit of oily steel. Any dark metallic color will do here. I'm just going to run this lightly along the edges of the tracks. 
Now for the turret lamp, I've got a little bit of azure. Now any light blue will work perfectly well here. I'm just using azure because I like the look and it's going to match the rest of my uh, British and 8th Army stuff so far. You can mix in a little bit of off-white. This is roughly half and half azure and off-white. Uh, or you can just use a lighter blue. And we'll paint a little crescent shape in the bottom of the lamp. And then with some off-white, just a little dot in one corner and a couple of dots up in the other. Now with some Vallejo Bright Orange and the scrangliest brush you can find, just stipple a little bit of this orange onto the uh, brown. Try not to hit the other stuff. <laughs> And now my favorite part is the chipping. I've got a bit of packing foam here that I'm going to fold over into a pretty rough, gnarly shape, like so. Dip this into a little bit of German camo black brown, which is a wonderful name. Dab most of it off onto a bit of kitchen towel. And then very lightly at the edges, where the tank is likely to see a little bit of damage, just dab at it with this to get an irregular dinged up pattern. Now in particular with this you want to concentrate on areas where the crew are likely to move. So uh, up near the sides of the turret and on the uh, running gear here. You don't need to do very much of this for it to be quite effective. And that's probably too much there. Now at this point if you want to do a dust or a sand filter you can do. I'm going to skip it on this fella. What I am going to do is take it outside and hit it with a matte varnish. Let's get a look at what this looks like when it's all done. And there at last, our hand-painted contour is complete. Now obviously if you have any decals to apply, you should do that before you do your weathering. I didn't have any, so I didn't. And it's as simple as that. Now the first time you do this, it will be a little bit daunting because the temptation will be there to make sure that every line is perfect and straight, the first time you put it on, but that doesn't have to be the case. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paint and glue, including my producers Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Rod, Andrew, and Jimmy. Your support means the world, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time on and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.